which is why we got to watch what we eat and all that. That's another video that we're not getting to. We're just getting into the mental preparation right now. But what you eat, I, I ain't going to even talk about it like I, I'm just so I my biggest takeaway is I got to get off the sugar. Woo! Just ate a cake today. A nice chocolate caramel cake. And it wasn't good. <laughs> it was not good. I ordered one yesterday. See, that was my problem. That's the problem. See? It's never good the second time. You look up and find one that's good, tasty, change your life. I'm like, boy, this was the best cake that I ever did, I ever had. Like, man, this joint is fire. Got me a cappuccino with it. It was chocolate. And it had like some chocolate glaze on it. It was like some creamy. I can't. I, it was like three layers. It was three layers. It was chocolate, white chocolate, and it was like chocolate crumbles, and it was like this smooth texture to it. It was about this big. It was probably like it was three layers. Boy, I, I'm talking about they had to make that in that Willy Wonka factory. Boy, that 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 cake right there. Mm, man, my mouth watering right now. Still thinking about that cake, man. Why I did it. See? And that's what got me. <laughs> <laughs> that's what got me in the predicament of why I'm getting more, trying to get more cake. Trying to get that feeling back. Ain't coming back. No. I ain't got this other chocolate caramel with all this cream and uh oh, I don't want that. I don't want from yesterday. We only make it once a day. We only make a oh man, you know, mess me up. So moving on to the fourth technique of mental preparation that we must have. I believe for every athlete to really excel their game and really become that supreme athlete that you we all are seeking to be. And that's positive self talk. We have to learn how to boost our own morale up. We have to learn how to be our biggest supporter, our biggest cheerleader. And like you have to become your biggest cheerleader. No one can be the deciding factor of how much they boost you up. A famous uh, motivational speaker I like to listen to named Brian Tracy. Brian Tracy says when to build his self-confidence up, he says, I like me. How many times a day do you tell yourself that you like you? He literally says over 20 to 30 to 50 times a day, he repeats to himself, I like me just to build his own confidence up. And I started applying that to my life. I like me. I like what I bring to the table. I like the person that I am. I like the athlete that I am. I like the teammate that I am. I like how I can bring my team and bring the energy to the team so I can be a help to another person and help to this organization or a help to my teammates to just be better. I like me. Do you like yourself? Building self-confidence in yourself with the positive talk that we speak, with the words that we speak. Your thoughts and beliefs are significant to your impact on your performance. How you talk about your play? Oh man, I missed this shot. Oh man, oh, I made a turnover. Oh, I fumbled a ball. I did a bad serve. Oh man, I can't. That negative talk affects your perfor perf performance. <laughs> Perform. Why can't I say the word performance? <laughs> I need right now. I believe that I can say that word good. That's good. This is this is the perfect moment right now to improve on my self talk and improve on my self positive attributes. You'll get that word. You'll make sure you say it right. You got it. That's is a key point right there to just you say, you know what, despite all the negative things that's possibly happening around me or in my current situation, I'm not going to let it dictate how I talk about myself. I like me. 
Brian Tracy is a great motivational speaker that speaks on these type of things that helps just human beings in general understand the power of their thought and their speech amongst themselves to themselves. How do you think for yourself? How do we get the use these mental techniques to just improve as athletes daily? And positive self-talk is one of the biggest things that you can do for yourself. Encourage yourself with positive self-talk and focus on your strengths and abilities. If you can shoot the ball, say you can shoot the ball every day to yourself. Talk to yourself. Give yourself the boost that you need. Hey, man, you're a great shooter. Bro, you are lights out. You are lights out. Look in that mirror. Talk to yourself. You are lights out. Man, your your handle is not cockiness when you're talking to yourself. If it's you and yourself by yourself talking to yourself and giving yourself the motivation that you need to become as great as you choose to be by the words you inflict upon yourself. You must understand the words that you're using amongst yourself to yourself to give yourself that confidence. Avoid self-talk. It can, it can lead to anxiety and it can lead to an underconfidence, underperforming. Because you're going to be bringing down your own confidence with your own talk. Out your mouth comes blessings and cursings. So basically what are you saying out your mouth is going to affect and dictate your outcome. I specifically try to make sure that the words that I that come out of my mouth are beneficial. Not only to me, but to everybody around me. I'm trying to create that vibration around me to attract everything around me that to help me improve in some way shape form in any aspect so what am i speaking among my, amongst myself i know every time i'm on the court and i'm i specifically remember right before a game it was a day before the game and i every basketball player that knows that they're going to have those days where it's just like man it's rough Training is rough and you're in your own head. I when I say I missed every shot I took in practice that day. It was a two hour practice. I missed every single shot I took. Every shot that I took I missed. Do you know the feeling that you're gonna have inside when you're like, Man, I got a game tomorrow and I'm not locked in. I can't make no shots. I can't hit nothing. That type of feeling that you got that goes through your head. But I, I decided to let what I continuously fuel my mind with. The Brian Tracy quote came in and said, you know what? I like me as a shooter. I like me to knock down the next shot. I believe I will make this next shot. I know I will make the next shot. No matter what the, the the outcome is of the shot that I take next, I decide to say it will go in before I even take it. That would be the only speech that I speak over everything that I do with every shot that I take. And the next game, even though that training, I did not make no shots. For over two hours the entire practice, I didn't make no shots. The next day, I kept that same attitude. I kept that same positive talk of I will make the next one. I will hit the next one. I like me. I like me. Guess what? You know what happened? Shot like 80%. Shot like 80% from the two. Probably had like 25, 27 points. Shot like 40% from three. Was player of the game. All because I decided to not speak negatively about myself. We're our own biggest critic. and We're our own biggest detriment. We tear ourselves down more than anybody that comes we come into contact with. Because we are with ourselves more than anybody. So we hear the words that we speak to ourselves more than anybody. So we have to be in control and responsible 
for how we treat ourselves and the way that we talk to ourselves. The words that we are allowing to flow out of our mouth, we must allow them to only lead towards our betterment and our enlightenment. If we want to be those that athlete that just decides to dominate a game, dominate a practice, dominate his situation, get better every single day, it's only going to come by the self-improvement and the speech that you put upon yourself in order to get better. There's a great book called The Hidden Messages in Water. It's by this um, scientist out in Japan. I read this book a few days ago. I was referred from some mentor guy that I watch on YouTube. So, and he was just talking about, they did a study, correct? They did a study on the power of positive speech and the effects that it has on water. So when you broke down the water and you put it under a microscope, it has a snowflake. When you freeze it to below freezing, it makes it creates the snowflake. No one snowflake is alike in this world. None. So when they froze the snow, the water down, they wanted to see what is the formation of the crystals that they have in this water. He took one cup of water and put gratefulness in the water. He took another one and put some negative word. I can't remember exactly what the word, but it was something negative. When they looked at the, the flake or the water crystal, the crystal of a water, it makes a snowflake design pattern. When you break it all the way down, when you put it under a microscope and get it down to its like the infinite, to, you know, the molecules of it creates a, a certain texture to it in the shape of a snowflake. Now, the, the cup that said gratefulness, the positive top, thank you. It created one of the most beautiful snowflake crystal designs. And the one that had the negative self-doubting talk paper that was with the water. It had an ugly, unformed snowflake design. It didn't even create a snowflake design. It was just an unformed design of like the molecules. Like it didn't form. It was just an ugly feature from water. Our body is 70% water. Our mind is 90% water. Kind of makes sense because the world is surrounded by 70% of water. So it kind of just shows the importance of water in this world and in our lives. And if the speech that we speak on ourselves can affect the water by even writing it on a piece of paper. Imagine what we're doing to ourselves. That's something we have to really start paying attention to and really use into benefit our lives, become that athlete, speak up on yourself, talk good about yourself. That's going to help you become the athlete you want to be in the first place. Why not take every single advantage by using your own words to your advantage? We want to use every program. We want to read every other. Uh, we want to watch every YouTube video on Kobe and all this, which is great. But we don't take the action of doing it ourselves when we're going to start to taking the action of being our own biggest supporter and making this into a science for ourselves we see everybody else talk about it and everybody else do it, but we don't do it for ourselves and stay committed to it stay locked into doing it really change our lives by what we sp what we speak and the last thing that we're going to use to another mental technique the fifth aspect that we are going to use for mental preparation is mental rehearsal. Mental rehearsal is basically the process of practicing and performing in your mind, the performance in your mind. This can help you become more familiar with the task, of course, increase your confidence and reduce the likelihood of you making mistakes. If this can be done with visualization and with mental preparation. This mental technique of mental rehearsal. I'll, I'll just give you a perfect example. Of the best way I can 
state this aspect, this technique, is I got a story. So, tell you a quick story about last year when I was playing in my seventh championship, right? The scenario broke down. We're down one with, I think it was under 30 seconds. I get an offensive rebound. Go up with the left hand, miss the easy layup. Well, it was contested, but <laughs> I missed it. Layup I should have made. I was having a great game. Probably had like 36 at that time. Some 35. I was having a great game. This is the finals, game three, on the road. We up two. So I hit this layup. We go up one. We get a defensive stop. Game over. But I missed. We foul. So I'm already thinking about what's going to happen next. What, what are all the scenarios that can possibly happen from here on out? I'm already rehearsing what can go, what's going to happen, what can happen, what would I do, what position I'll be in, what shot would I take from now until the end of the game. I'm already rehearsing every single scenario that can possibly happen in this aspect on the fly. Because I take time to visualize. visualize. I take time to put myself in these positions where, hey, I've hit game winners before. I've hit big time buckets before. And when I do those, or when I've had those moments, I went back to those moments and replayed the times where I didn't make the game winning shot. What could I have done different? Rehearse these moments over and over and see, going back on film and watching it and meditating and visualizing how I could have done it different. So when I'm put in this situation, I already know what to do. We get the rebound, we get the, um, they get the rebound, we foul. They go hit two free. They hit one free throw. They up two. We draw up a play. I get an, I get the ball. Drive. Get a foul. That rehearsal. I say, okay, all I got to do is knock down two. We tie it up. We possibly go into overtime. Or I go one of one. We foul. I hit a three. You tie us up. We go into overtime. I hit the first one. Boom. Got the next one. Felt good. Missed it. They got it. About 10 seconds come, they're dribbling it down, they're trying to dribble out, the, dribble out the clock. I run over there, follow the point guard, he knocks down two free throws. We're down three. In my head, I say, we're good. I literally said, we're good. Coach is drawing up a play. I told the point guard, whatever you do, just give me the ball. Because I've already seen the ending of this story. I already did my dress rehearsal in my mind. I already sang this movie. I produced this movie in my mind. I went through rehearsal. I already seen the shot going in. I already been in this situation because I put that mental rehearsal in my head. I've done it so many times. I've already went to casting call. I've already got the part. I already did all that. I sat back and watched this movie in my mind a thousand times. So I already know the ending result. You know what the end result was? I... We ran the play, he gave me the ball, I hit a crazy three right, in, right over the 6'10", 6'11", guy all over me, foul, no call, I hit it. Why? Because I wrote the movie. I already knew what the, the ending was. I wrote it in my mind. I already went over it so many times. It's rehearsal, it's practice. I, I, I practice it here so many times. So when it happens... You're not surprised by what you've already done. We have to start unlocking that mindset and unlocking what we can do with our minds and how we can make those things happen for us. Once you put yourself in that position so many times, you just change literally your existence as a player. You just completely tap into a force that you have in between these two ears of yours. To unlock so much potential that what you can do. So mental rehearsal is definitely something that we need to take more in consideration and start applying. You are the director of your own movie that goes on in your mind. You say action. You say cut. You put in the fill-ins. You this, this is your movie. You act upon it the way you want it. You, you decide the ending of your movie. You created it. 
So when the time comes, you ready? I've seen this movie before. I know how this ends. So going over just a quick rundown. Visualization. Goal setting. Mindfulness and relaxation. Positive talk. And mental rehearsal. The five techniques that can turn you into the most dynamic, supreme athlete that you can be. That's all we got for this episode. I hope you guys got value out of this. It's just some things that I've been able to accomplish out of my life that I've been able to use in my life that in my journey as an athlete. You know, once you're going through the athlete's journey, it's always great to connect with people who are on the same page or on the same level. Like I put myself nowhere above anybody. We all going through the same thing as athletes. I, I'm an overseas basketball player playing as overseas. I got so many guys that go through the same thing. We going through the same life from guys who played in the NBA to guys who playing overseas to high school to college. The athlete's path, the athlete's just our way of passage. We're all going through the same. We can all use these benefits to help us just maximize because we all just want to be great in what we do. A true competitor of the game wants to just be the best competitor he can be. So I hope you take these techniques and use them and apply them to your life so you can be that athlete and be that supreme athlete that you can be and achieve all the things that you want. Because we got to remember greatness is a habit, not a right. Till next time. Hey guys, thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe on our YouTube, Spotify, Apple, and wherever you listen to your podcast. I greatly appreciate it.